Welcome back to another day of remote video lectures. Um, today we're going to be talking about momentum, impulse, and pretty much everything you already knew about impulse and momentum, including the conservation of momentum and the impulse momentum theorem. And then we're going to AP Physics C calculusify it. So let's get started. First up, definition of momentum. Um, what is momentum? Momentum is mass in motion. And that's really convenient because we've got an equation that says mass in motion. Well, mass times velocity a bit. Notice that these little arrows are above these letters. Um, that means momentum, capital P, with is a vector quantity, and also the momentum is in the direction of the velocity vector. So momentum as a vector equals mass, which is a scalar, times velocity as a vector. Uh, units of momentum, mass times velocity, or kilograms times meters per second. Um, next up, impulse. Impulse, well, what is that? Impulse is this weird thing um, that we have defined because, well, we needed a word for it. Um, for, for something, hmm. think about this. Momentum, if you want to describe something's momentum, you say it has mass, it has velocity, it has momentum. But it's not a really useful concept until something happens. Specifically, momentum is only useful once the object runs into something and there's a force applied to it. Uh, okay, so impulse changes momentum. Um, so this impulse is this force on an object which changes momentum. So impulse is the force times the time. Um, let's see, units of impulse, force times time is newtons times seconds. Well, let's do a little math magic here. What's a newton? Newton is a kilogram times meter per second squared. Let's see, times seconds. So what do you get when you do that? Well, you get a kilogram meter per second squared times seconds. The seconds cancel the kilogram. Hey, look. Momentum and impulse have the same units. What's that mean? It means they are similar and related in a certain ways, which I'm just about to talk about in the impulse momentum theorem. So here we go. Impulse momentum theorem says that impulse changes momentum, or J equals delta P. Uh, proof of that, newton seconds as the same units as kilogram meters per seconds. Um, an impulse imparted on an object changes the momentum of the object. Hmm. What's that mean? It means that if something has momentum, and you push it, you apply a force, then its momentum will change. So if something has a momentum of zero, and uh, you push it in a certain direction, now it's going to have some momentum in that direction. Mathematically, the impulse integral of f dt equals the change in momentum. Now that looks like a big difficult equation, but it's really not. Here's all it basically says in its more practical algebra form. Force times change in time, or force times a time, force applied over a time interval equals mass times change in velocity. All right, sorry for that brief uh, interlude there. Um, anyway, uh, impulse momentum theorem, impulse changes momentum. Moving on. For a constant force and a constant mass, Basically, what this translates to is F delta T equals M delta V, um, which is kind of neat. It basically says there's a relationship between the force on the object and how much its speed changes. All right. So think about it this way. Is it possible for a, um, a satellite uh, to change its speed by a thousand miles an hour just using a tiny little one newton thruster? And the answer is yeah, it could. Why? Well, all you have to do is leave that thruster on for a really long time and you'll get a big change in velocity. 
All right, so anyway, next up, law of conservation of momentum basically says if you look at a whole bunch of particles that are colliding, assuming that there are no external forces on the particles, the total momentum of the system will remain constant. So say you have a box full of vibrating molecules. The box will just sit there. If it starts with zero momentum, 10 minutes later it'll still have zero momentum, even though the individual particles have a ton of momentum. They're all just at all times canceling each other out. All right. Now, that's all nice in theory, but here's what we actually use in practice. For a system of two objects, the total momentum of the first plus the second object before anything happens equals the total momentum of the first plus the second object after anything happens, assuming that there are no external pushes or pulls on the system. All right, and this goes along well with what we talked about with the center of mass yesterday. All right, so, whew, Newton's second law. Um, I didn't do a specific lecture on Newton's second law because you all think you know what Newton's second law says. But here's what it really says. According to the uh, Andrew Mott 200-year-old translation of the Isaac Newton Latin, uh, which is... Uh, about 400 years old. Um, here's what Mott said that Newton said. The alteration of motion is ever proportional to the motive force impressed and is made in the direction of the right line in which that force is impressed. Let's see. The alteration of motion, what's that? Well, you can actually, you would normally think of that as acceleration, but you could also think of that as the change in momentum. The change in momentum, the alteration of motion, is proportional to how much force you push with. And moreover, the change in momentum depends on the direction of the force. Okay, so mathematically, alteration of momentum is the rate of change of momentum, which would be dp over dt. And the motive force impressed is F. So, Newton's second law could therefore be written as F equals dP over dt. Wow, isn't that neat. Hmm. <sighs> Last year, let's see, you said F was equal ma. But this new version allows you to do, instead of m times a, it allows you to account for situations where the mass is not constant, where the mass of the system is changing. Say, for example, you had a rocket ship. And how's a rocket work? It shoots gases at the back, and that causes the rocket to be propelled forward with a certain force. Well, what happens as the rocket loses mass because it's losing gas? Well, you can't just use F equals MA anymore because M is changing. But you can use F equals DP over DT. So, in general, since P is MV, there are two types of problems, or two ways to use Newton's second law, this dp over dt idea. F equals dmv over dt. If your velocity is constant, F would equal the velocity times the rate of change of the mass. And this is what you would do for the rocket ship. As you lose mass, or rather, uh, actually I take that back. This we're going to use in a special circumstance that I'm going to describe later. Um, the other one is if your mass is constant, it's F equals m dv over dt, which is just ma. All right, so we're going to focus a little bit on this first version because that's new to you guys. All right. Um, oh, impulse momentum theorem. If we know that... 
hold on one second, let me pull this up. Impulse momentum theorem is integral of f dt equals m times the total change in velocity. But if you get rid of the integral sign, you're just saying f times a little piece of time equals m times a little tiny change in velocity. Pull the dt over to the other side and you get f equals m dv over dt. Impulse momentum theorem is just Newton's second law restated, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see, one more thing. Since change in momentum is equal to impulse, and impulse is just the area under a force and time graph, f dt, integral of f dt, we can find the change in momentum of an object if we have a force and time graph. So let's say you had a changing force, and the force started at zero at zero seconds, goes up to 100 newtons at one second, uh, stays at 100 newtons till 3 seconds, and then at 5 seconds it drops back down to zero again. So that would be a force that pushes harder, 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 constant, 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 and then weaker, weaker, weaker until you're at zero. Well, what's going to happen to your velocity? Well, clearly, if you started at zero velocity, you're going to speed up because you're being pushed the whole time. But the question is, how much are you going to speed up? Well, all you have to do is figure that out with the area under the triangle plus the rectangle plus the triangle. 50 newton seconds plus 200 newton seconds plus 100 newton seconds. After all of this pushing, you should get a total change in momentum of uh, 350 newton seconds or 350 kilogram meters per second. All right, and like always, if, if you have a more complex function uh, that's, that's instead of just a piecewise linear thing like this, you have something like forces negative t squared plus 2t. W what's that mean? Well, that means that the force started out weak, got strong, and then got weak again. Well, this, this actually is, is a pretty common type of force. It gets and then weaker again. And you want to know how much that force over that time changed the momentum. All you have to do is integrate. And of course you would find if you did it with these numbers comes out to be from here to here four-thirds of a kilogram meter per second. So if you had a one kilogram object it would change its momentum, sorry, it changes its velocity by four-thirds of a meter per second. And that's it. Thanks for listening.